Hey everybody, Steve Burns here from Criminalution.com. Tony Rizzo made a comment on Discord um, as to the question was if we had a feature that is just like Lightwave where we can drag things around. So I'm be I believe he's speaking of the magnetic tool in Lightwave. And the answer to your question is yes, we do. Here's my sphere. I'm in edit mode. I went ahead and went to point editing mode. If I select a point, and all I need to do is hit the G key on the keyboard. It will attach that point to my cursor and I can move it around wherever I want in the interface. Okay, I'm going to hit escape key so we can go back. So keep in mind where you place your points is, or your cursor is very important here. So let's place it close to the point itself. Hit the G key. Now it's attached to the cursor. It becomes a little bit more intuitive. All right, so I'm going to hit escape again. Now, I can also hold down the control and right click, right, and select a bunch of points. It gives me a lasso select tool, like so. Hit the G key, and again, it attaches all those points to my cursor. All right, we can handle this in, in a much better way. We have something inside of Blender called proportional editing, okay? If you bring your eye up to the top of your menus, dead center, you'll see where you where you can actually set your local, or your global, or your normal um, attributes or, 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 or a way of uh, um, navigating things around. If you go just to the right, and you'll see a, a little bit of a slope peeking up here, that's your proportional editing. So if I click the little button just to the left side of it, and I, and I target this point, now I'm going to hit the G key and pull it on out and look. It's responding to the circumference of that circle that you see there. So that's your influence. Now, all I need to do at this point is take the wheel and bring it down, and, and it reduces the influence to the point where we only have the one point being navigated. So if I increase the size of the circle, it starts to grab more points to pull it around, and that is proportional editing. editing. I'm going to hit the escape key to drop it back. Now, what's really nice is if you, if you also come right up here to the top, where you saw that little bit of that slope up here, drop it down, and you have various shapes. So these are just basic shapes. If I want a wider shape, wider, rounder shape, then I'm going to click on the sphere option and then go to the G key and look at how it's grabbing it. It's grabbing it very differently, different. So if you want to make like raindrops of some sort, um, this may be a good little tool to work with. Um, let's go back. Let's go down and choose a different shape. How about this sharp shape here? And I'm going to select it, G key, and pull it. See how that's all is, is, is honoring the shape that we have selected up there. Let's choose one more. Let's go right over here to the very bottom, drop it down, and go to random. Right? And let's see what happens. Hit the G key. And this is going to be great for doing landscapes uh, or mountain uh, or mountain peaks and so forth. Okay, so there we have it. That is the proportional editing right up here. Just make sure to turn it off when you're done, because if you, if you forget, things will start to move in in a way that uh, you may not necessarily predict. All right. Hope hopefully that was uh, helpful for you. Steve Burns from Criminalution.com and more to come.